Hey everyone, I'm coming just a little early, maybe a minute before um, I normally do. And uh, much of it is because I have a lot to share with you today. And we have many prayer requests and also uh, some prayers for those whose uh, loved ones have gone on. Uh, I was just texting uh, Harry's cousin, uh, Danny, to check on Chris, his beloved precious wife uh, who loves God with all of her heart and precious, precious woman of God. And as I was texting him, he uh, texted me and said she went on to be with Jesus this morning at 5 a.m. Uh, from uh, complications uh, from having COVID and having been vented for a while. And I'm not sure what all the details are, but I know that uh, she loves God with all of her heart. And sometimes it's just uh, the pull of heaven and for Danny and the family and her children and your children we just pray uh, God's heart be with you and that the Spirit of the Lord that uh, covers you and the grace of God covers all of you through this uh, season I so remember when Gabrielle went to heaven I literally felt like there was a cloud and it was a cloud not of grief but of glory it was a cloud of grace that everywhere we went, every conversation that I had, it was like God would protect my heart from just breaking in two. And I'm not saying I didn't break down and cry. I did a lot. But it was as if it didn't devastate me each and every time I broke down and cried. It, that's grace. Grace is what carries you through when you, you can't go through any other way. Grace is the miracle power of God that in empowers you and strengthens you and we just ask not only for Danny uh, Salem and his, and his um, children and Chris's children and and for the family not only for them but for all of you who are struggling right now uh, trying to make your way through the valley of the shadow of death grief that's what that is the valley of the shadow of death and we make our way through it because they don't they're not in the valley of the shadow of death. The moment they take their last breath here and their first breath in eternity, there is no shadow. There is no more shadow of turning. There is no more darkness. It's only light, 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 and more light. And really and truly, we're the ones who walk through the valley of the shadow of death when we grieve and when we've walked a loved one to the edge of eternity and they get to go and we have to stay here it takes the Lord walking with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us as we journey through this. My heart is with you, Danny, and the children, and uh, Harry and I send our love and our condolences, but we also celebrate with Chris as we weep with you. And there will be some weeping. Uh, I haven't had that opportunity since I came live with you right away. Uh, I just wanted to share that because it was so uh, fresh on my heart, literally as I was coming uh, live, I, I got the text from Danny. And so let me see who's joining me today. Hi, Charlie in Mississippi. Did you get snow? My sister sent me snow pictures this morning from Meridian. Lucy, hey, sweet girl. And uh, hi, Danielle. So good to see you, sweet girl. We still pray for you. And I know that every word that I just said speaks directly to you since both your parents have recently gone on to heaven. Um, both uh, Spencer and Krista, and I cannot wait to get to see them. Laura, so good to see you, sweetheart, and Deborah. Uh, Kelly, nice to see you, honey, and Mahesh, I love you. And so many of you are moving your registration from January to the June uh, School of the Holy Spirit that will be over the Pentecost long weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's June 2nd through the 5th. So I'm just here to tell you, if you are watching and you have uh, not yet uh, registered for or moved if you were registered in January. If you've moved your registration, awesome. If you haven't, you need to. You need to tell Debbie where you want to go. Some are, also, are doing both. They're registering for the June School uh, of the Holy Spirit and, and moving their January to the July School. I recommend doing that. Uh, because they're going to be different. They're not the same. The emphasis in the Pentecost weekend will be the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the moving of the Holy Spirit, how to flow in the Holy Spirit, how to get your flesh out of the way, how to get your soul realm out of the way so that your spirit man is totally in the lead. And that will be the emphasis of the June 2nd through the 5th school. 
I'm already here to tell you it is more than half full and we do have capacity on both the June School of the Holy Spirit and the July School of Worship because we're in a hotel and we only have X amount of spaces that we can put in those schools and uh, meet fire marshal code and just general space. Uh, Mahesh will be, uh, Mahesh and Robert will be with us. That's what made me think of it. Mahesh, they're both coming to the June Holy Spirit School, but also Mahesh will be teaching flag, prophetic flag in the uh, July school. Hi, Debbie. Debbie, er, Debbie is the one who, if you need anything and I can't get to you, then call Debbie or text Debbie at 918, Debbie, put your number in the comments right now, please. 918-639-1747. That's Salem Family Ministries office number. And if you want to register over the phone, you need to text or call her right away. Oh, it's also available on our website, uh, salemfamilyministries.org. You can register through Eventbrite, Eventbrite there for the June School uh, of the School of the Holy Spirit, the July School of Worship, both of which are already more than half full, so you need to move quickly. And then also the first time ever school in Georgia. And so I'm telling you guys, if you're in South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, please support that Georgia school because you can drive to it. And it will be the very last Friday night and Saturday of April. And then we will be there Sunday morning. And so this is at the Pope's with Pastor Gregory and pa Pastor Jackie and Pastor Allison in Douglas, Georgia. Also, the very next in-person school of worship will be at Pastor Larry and Kathy Eberhardt in Gainesville, Texas, and that will be in March. And so, Debbie, are you putting up your number? I don't see you doing that. I don't know if you can't hear me or if you are not able to, 639, I'll do it myself. 1747, there you go, that is the uh, ministry number. But also, if you are uh, go coming to the Texas school, can anybody put the dates for that school up? Um, what do you mean you can't see me? Who else can't see me? Uh, I'm gonna give you an update, uh, Liz Vance on Harry. Hi, uh, Lisa, so good to see you, um, Connie, uh, looking at all of your names. Um, great, you're watching together. Why can't you see me? Is anybody having trouble seeing me? Or is everyone else seeing me? Um, please let me know if you're having trouble. Oh, Laura, you're planning on coming to the Georgia School. Awesome. Laura Kokenauer will be with me, hopefully at both the Texas School and the Georgia School for sure. So uh, let's get your registrations in as quickly as possible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yay. Um, great. Thank you, Sonny. So, so many prayer requests. And uh, last week I began praying for people. And, and I want to make sure that we do that. But I kind of mix it up on purpose uh, so that um, we can... Let me give you an update on Harry, first of all. I, I have a good report for you. Each week I feel like he's making progress. Uh, we don't. We haven't been back to the doctor. The next CT scan is February the 17th. We found an awesome doctor over in Lake Havasu City, Arizona that my friend Joni Lamb found for us. And we'll be uh, traveling over there uh, February the 10th and meeting with her. And she uh, believes that she has a treatment that any residual left from COVID or even residual left from the vaccine, uh, she can remove it. And so that'll be on February the 10th. And then seven days later, we'll have the CT scan. And I'm believing for a great report. Harry is believing that instead of saying moderate to severe scar tissue, that they'll no. say no scar tissue. And every week he tells me, I felt my lungs open up. I just felt my lungs open up. I just felt my lungs open up. And each week he tells me this is where I wasn't feeling anything. And now I feel like it's opening. So he is making progress. Please keep praying for him. God is moving and on, on his behalf, and I keep saying the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead quickens his mortal flesh. I'm also praying that for me because I took a tumble on my uh, bike. We do um, part, of, part of our physical therapy for him uh, every day is we ride bikes outside in the sunshine. And it, we do breathing exercise while we ride. And today, uh, right before uh, we came in and I had to get ready to come and see you, I took a really big tumble on the bike. And um, 
I'm not sure physically what I did, but I did hurt myself, both arms, both elbows, um, muscular nerve and all of that. Couldn't move my arms at all, but look at me now. I'm moving my arms. God is quickening. I keep saying the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead quickens my mortal flesh, quickens my muscles, quickens my nerves, quickens my fibers, quickens my sinews. And I thank God that I've said every day of my life that my bones are strong because the tumble that I took Thank God for the word. Glory to God. And so I just keep moving and I just keep speaking the word and I don't give in to pain. Pain has no... I learned years and years ago when my left leg was crushed in 32 places and my back was broken. I learned that pain has no power over me in the name of Jesus. I say pain go in Jesus name and that sucker's got to flee. And it does. Every time I take authority over it, I command in the name of Jesus right now that if you are in pain, that that pain has to go and leave you now in the name of Jesus. And so we just continue to move forward. I just will tell you, when you can't lift your arms, I can now, glory to God, I can lift them all the way up to here. But I just wash my hair without the ability to put my hands on my head. There's a trick. Now I can almost put my hands on my head. So glory to God, I'm moving much better. And so I'm just telling you, don't give in to circumstances and situations. Speak to them. Command in the name of Jesus that the power of God to work, activate in your life. First thing I did was I didn't say, Lord, heal me. You know why? Because Jesus already did his part. It's my part to receive what Jesus did for me. I said, thank you, Lord. I received what Jesus did for me over 2,000 years ago. Every stripe he took on his back was in this position right now. You already saw me in the future, and I received my healing healing right now in the name of Jesus and I appropriated what Jesus has already done for me and I encourage you to be your best prayer warrior. I will pray for you. Thank you for sending your prayer requests in. We have over 350 intercessors that will pray for you but learn to pray for yourself also. Learn to appropriate God's word. Learn to say what the word is saying in Jesus name and so I told Pamela as I first uh, came live, I would tell you what I have on. And this may not be on the website yet. I'm not sure. Debbie is working on that. I took the pictures. But this is a brand new necklace. And it is uh, Faith, Hope, and Love. The greatest of these is love. And it's a beautiful, got several charms on it, including a gold anchor and then the little gold anchor earrings all going on the website. If they're not there already, Debbie will have them up quickly and uh, you can get those uh, to help our ministry. Thank you all for ordering everyday uh, product, books, CDs, uh, downloads, the jewelry, all of that helps our ministry. And for those of you who partner with us, thank you. Thank, th I pray over your partnership. I pray that God blesses you. He opens the windows of heaven over you and he pours you out a blessing that you don't even have enough room to contain it. It just pours out and puddles up all around you in the name of Jesus. And so I just thank God for you, for your partnerships. I see uh, Connie Cosley been partnering with us for years and Lisa and Mahesh and so many of you, Jesse and Debbie and Richard De and Anna and just so many of you partnering with us and I so appreciate you all. Christine, I see you there and Michelle and Vanessa and Laura, all of you, uh, Laura Beeland, thank you all. Uh, I, if I missed anybody, please forgive me. I was just kind of hurrying because I just want to get to that point. I have on my prayer bracelet, please, one of my favorite gifts I gave at Christmas uh, I gave to my Jewish friend, my precious uh, Jewish friend and neighbor, Dottie, and I gave her the pray bracelet uh, this weekend, I mean, over Christmas, and I was so thankful that I had it to give, just reminding us all to pray. I have on my Women of the Nation bracelet, and I have on the New Believe with the gray leather strap and the magnet clothes, just encouraging you to wear scriptures that and, and have jewelry that when the Lord tells you, take that off and give it to somebody. Or they make a comment, I love your necklace, that you can easily say, well, let me give it to you. And I know uh, one of my uh, lights just went out. I'm not worried about it. So half of me is in the dark. The other half's in the light. Not worried at all. So let's get going on the word. Um, oh, Karen, thank you for watching from Brisbane, Australia. I appreciate uh, having you with us. And Jesse, we are praying for Gabriel. He's still bat battling respiratory virus, and there, let there be light. And the light came back on. Glory to God. So, with all of that said, I've given you a little report on Harry. 
I want to talk to you about what will produce light in you in 2022. I, I just felt as I studied this week, I'm writing a new book on the Holy Spirit. And my goal is to have it written, edited, and ready uh, by the June 2nd uh, Pentecost weekend School of the Holy Spirit. And as I write about the Holy Spirit, I am just amazed at the vastness of Him. But one of the things that keeps coming to me is last week when I spoke to you about, um, and, and I've spoken to you about this particular subject in various uh, different times with you, but about the oil. Uh, I talked to you last week about Second Samuel, and I want you to turn there right now because there was something that I didn't get to and I want to make sure I do. So jump in on Second Samuel, and uh, as we turn to Second Samuel, I just want to point out, I'm not going to read you the scripture, I just want you to know where it is for when um, for when you want to study. This was the story about King David. Obed-Edom was the side story, but his story became so fascinating to me because of his bloodline and what he didn't have in the natural and how his spirit man overrode his natural bloodline. And that's what we need to understand, that our naturalness does not matter. Our spirit man what are you willing to hunger and thirst for? What are you willing to run after with all of your might? So in this story, I talked about how King David went to move the Ark of the Covenant that had been out of position, out of the city of David for well over 100 years. And that see, we talk about this and you think, oh, it's a couple of months that the Ark of the Covenant was in the wrong place, but it wasn't. It was over 100 years it wasn't in position. And it can happen so quickly if we're not careful where our nation will go without the Spirit of the Lord being in its right position. I would say we're about 50 years right now. Ever since we, uh, as a nation, the abortion law was passed uh, in 1972, I believe it is, we have been in a downward spiral of less and less light of God in our nation and more and more darkness having authority. And so we have to be brighter when the nation in itself is getting darker. We must be brighter. Now, in 2 Samuel, King David went to move the ark, and he didn't move it right. He copied the world. He copied the Philistines. Uh, he tried to do church like the world, okay? Just exactly what we've seen in our culture. Not every church by any means, but... As a society, we have to be careful that we don't replace the moving of the Holy Spirit with technology or and we get satisfied with the smoke machine instead of the Shekinah glory of the Lord. It's not that the smoke machine is wrong. Please don't take that as what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it can't take the place. When you replace the Holy Spirit with the smoke machine, now the whole area is in trouble. So... Again, not saying don't use the smoke machine. I'm saying hunger and thirst after the glory of God. Look for the Shekinah glory. Look for the move of God. Look for the cloud by day and the fire by night. Look for these things in your own personal life. So easy to look over at religion. It's so easy to look over at organized church and start blaming them when in your own personal life, you don't have any Shekinah glory moving either. You don't have any uh, light of, of God filling your own house, your own temple. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Until we can get to that point, until we can get to the point where we truly understand that I am the temple, that the Holy Spirit wants to move in. You are the temple that the Holy Spirit wants to move in, and you are supposed to be wall-to-wall -wall carpeting with the Holy Ghost. Wall-to-wall, -wall, ceiling to floor, Holy Ghost, Shekinah glory. And so as we walk in this this year, we have an open heaven right now with 22 meaning light. We are in the 22nd position, the fourth doe in the circle of tones of the throne room. And uh, thank you all for those of you who really heard me talk about rebuilding the ruins of worship, which is the second, uh, second Samuel chapter 6. Now, what I wanted to point out to you was a simple thing about the king about King David. Just a very simple thing. When he first went to move the ark, he arrayed himself in his kingship robes. Do you know what? The one thing I have learned 
is God is not the least bit impressed with anything I've ever accomplished in the natural. He, I don't go before the Lord and say, here I am, here's my Miss America crown. Here's what I won 42 years ago. Oh, aren't you impressed? He is so not impressed with any natural thing. If it wasn't for him, I would have never had that crown. If it was not for him and what he wanted to do through me, that, that would have been an impossibility for this little country girl from Choctaw County, Mississippi. And so to take it back and offer it to him is something that, that would cover me? No. No, no, no. And King David would never have been in that position as king had Samuel not gone under orders of the Holy Spirit, under orders of the Spirit of God to anoint David as king. David would have never had that kingship robe. So the very first mistake he made was thinking that God would be impressed or not even caring if God was impressed. He was impressing the people with his kingship robe. And because of his lack of understanding, because of his lack of identity in identifying himself with some natural accomplishment which had nothing to do with him in the first place, only because of the Spirit of God and the obedience of Samuel the prophet to go and ordain him as king, did he ever even get a kingship robe. So he should never have thought that was going to impress God most of the time makes me look back and think, was he even interested in impressing God? Had he completely forgotten who the Spirit of God is? Had he completely forgotten in all of his kingship? Had he gotten so wrapped up in his natural stuff that he forgot how to be the priest that God said, I have made you, Revelations 1 verse 6, I have made you kings and priests. I have made you. You couldn't make yourself a king or a priest if you tried, but God said, I've made you a king and a priest. So after he does it all wrong, then he goes back to move the Ark of the Covenant out of Obed-Edom's home and move it into the city of David and put the presence of God in its rightful position. In the process of doing that, we find he does not ever put on his kingship robe. He only dresses himself in his linen ephod. He throws off his kingship robe, so much so that as he's coming into the city of David, his wife Michael is looking down from the window and sees her king husband and no kingship robe, only that little in, uh, linen ephod, which was priesthood identification. And in the process of priesthood identification, no longer is he wearing his kingly robe. And she gets so angry with him because her identity is wrapped up in who her husband is. First, it was wrapped up in who her father was because Saul was the king. Then David is the king and he's her husband. Her father is no longer king. Now her husband is thrown off his kingship and he's put on a little ephod. And worse than that, he's dancing like a girl. He, was, he threw off his gendership and danced like a girl before the ark of the Lord. And she was so humiliated. Her pride was so in the way that from the moment she looked at her husband and despised him for his worship, she despised him for his worship. Don't be shocked when people despise you for your worship, when your worship becomes pure and holy and not about you at all, but you worship as a priest. When that happens, people may despise you. Michael so despised her husband, David, that her womb dried up on the spot. If you don't think your soul realm and your body are affected by what you allow in your life, she became so bitter on the spot that her abdominal region, her female organs, literally dried up and stopped functioning immediately. Listen, you cannot just let bitterness stay in your life. You cannot let unforgiveness stay in your life. You cannot let anger, frustration, ill temper, all these works of the flesh that, that I'm writing about right now in the chapter on the fruit of the Spirit, when you allow the flesh to rule you, your flesh is affected. You have to let it go. I don't know about you, but I had to take time today and repent. Repent of selfishness and rep repent of pride and repent of ill temper and losing my temper and not being patient. I had to repent. And I don't know about you, but maybe you would like to stop right now and repent too because 
I don't want my womb to dry up while my womb, I'm already in 22 years in the menopause, but I still want everything that can function. I want it to function properly in Jesus' name, and I don't want any part of my soul realm causing my body to be sick in the name of Jesus. So I'm just if you need to repent, stop and put it in the comments. Confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. Now, with that in mind, he wore his little in linen ephod robe, robe. In other words, God's not impressed with your natural things, but can you dress yourself in priesthood glory and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Now, with that thought in mind, I've been writing all week about the Holy Spirit, actually for two weeks now, I'm writing about the Holy Spirit, and it just dawned on me in 2022, I've talked about light and what you can expect and what is coming, and yet here we are several weeks now into January, I think today's the January the 16th, and 16 days into January, and the Omicron virus is surging, more people than ever are asking for prayer, uh, more people are ever, uh, and more people than ever are texting me and saying, please pray for me. Uh, people are still dying all around us. Uh, people are, are still hospitalized and being vented all around us. Where's the light? Well, let's start with this. The light of God is not about coming on the horizon of a nation, even though that will happen. It starts in the heart of me and you. It starts with my own personal rise of light. I, uh, Laura and I are writing these new songs that God has given us right now, and we're uh, working on a new worship CD. Hopefully, we'll have it out <clears throat> by June. Uh, that's our goal. It may be July, but we'll we'll have it. Whenever we have it, we have it. But one of the songs that uh, we wrote this week was called Glory Rising, and it came out of me praying for you and for what's coming in 2022 back in uh, November. And I had this quick vision, and I was in the darkest darkness that, that I can recall in this vision. And the Lord was with me, and I said, Lord, where is the light? I'm prophesying, let there be light. This was before I shared it with you. I'm prophesying, Father, light, light, the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. I'm prophesying it, Lord, but it's so dark. And the Holy Spirit said to me, look to the horizon. And I looked as far as I could in my vision. I looked as far as my eyes would see. And off to the very tip of my vision, I saw glory rising over the horizon. And it began to come up higher and higher and higher. And I began to sing this song out of my spirit, glory rising. Uh, Pamela was staying with us at the time, helping me uh, take care of Harry and, and helping me, just helping me, period. And, and I began, I sat down at the piano and I started singing it. And the presence of God was all over it about glory rising. That'll be on the new worship CD. I'm telling you, no matter how dark it seems, ask the Lord to give you a vision. And the glory began to rise and the light began to come up over the horizon. And then, of course, uh, you all know that uh, California coast, and not just California, the whole West Coast, had a warning this week, a tsunami warning. Wow, how many of you remember in 2017, I had the vision of the tidal wave coming up first on the West Coast, then on the East Coast, and both of these supernatural, they were supernatural tidal waves, not natural ones, supernatural tidal waves covered the United States. The United States was on fire. It was red on fire. And then these two tidal waves came up, and the fire didn't quench the water, and the water didn't quench the fire. Both those tidal waves came forth, I know you've heard me tell this many, many times, but I'm telling you that just a few weeks ago, around uh, December the 20th, 21st, there was also a, a volcano eruption in, I believe it's La Palma, Spain, and everybody was afraid that that was going to create a tsunami on the east coast of the United States. It did not do it, but everyone was looking to that, and they were. you can find these articles all over the web, all you have to do is Google, and, and that was there. It was the uh, fear of it, and then we just had this uh, warning to stay off the beaches 
uh, over the last uh, 48 hours. And we've had three earthquakes, uh, visible earthquakes here in the last 48 hours. I'm telling you, we are in the last days. Jesus is coming. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes this year. I'm excited about what God is doing, and this is no time to be messing around. This is time to be repenting, asking God to forgive you uh, when you fail, when you fall, which I do. You do. We do. We have to repent quickly. I repented quickly of my attitude uh, yesterday. I got on my face. I got on my knees. I asked the Lord to forgive me. I asked Harry to forgive me because he was subject to my ill temper and my bad attitude. And so, I'm, hi, Michelle. Hi, Norma. Uh, so, I'm just asking you all to be very, very aware of what is going on in the spirit and, and what is happening in the natural, what is happening in our government. Uh, we, we have to repent corporately. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. I will heal their land. We can bring about repentance. The nation may never repent. The government may never repent, but there is a remnant of us in this nation who can repent corporately for the nation. And it may not stay the hand of judgment off the nation, but it will. It can hold it off until the remnant of the bride is taken out. We are literally holding off judgment. We are holding off the... Um, exposing of the Antichrist, the rising of the Antichrist into position. I shared this just a few weeks ago. So I want to talk to you about how you can personally have enough oil. Uh, first flip over to Matthew 25. I've already talked about this with you, so I'm not going to take the whole uh, story about the ten virgins, but I'm going to talk to you about it from this standpoint. Uh, five of they all had oil at one point, but while they waited, while the bridegroom tarried, while it took a while, five of them did not retain enough oil. Now, this is what you have to understand: uh, the menorah in the Jewish culture, and the oil, and and uh, Zechariah, and the oil trees, uh, olive trees, dropping oil. This, this is all symbolic, but it's you and me today. The oil of the Spirit of God is the light that you long for. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, if you are not praying in the Holy Spirit, if you're not giving place to the Spirit of God, you may have had enough oil, but do you have enough now? The spirit of discouragement and disappointment and trying to get us to quit and trying to get us to give up and trying to harass us to the point that we quit. This is the enemy's onslaught. Uh, every demonic force, I mean, even our own president is cursing people who haven't been vaccinated. So, hey, you, you've got to break those curses in the name of Jesus and walk in the blessing of God. You cannot be cursed when you are blessed. So I am blessed. Come on and say it. I've got tons of jewelry that says I am blessed. You should be wearing it, reminding yourself that you're not afraid of a curse uh, said by a human, but you are walking. We don't operate in sorcery or witchcraft. We're not afraid. We are not superstitious. We don't operate in that. That is a work of the flesh, and we are not fleshly. We are supernatural, superhuman spiritual beings that housed in flesh with a soul, but we are a spirit, and our spirit can be completely possessed by the Holy Spirit. Our whole spirit man can be wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost, and when our spirit man is yielded to the Holy Spirit, then we are one with the Spirit of God. I'm talking about all of this in my new book, How to Be One with the Spirit of God. Maybe I'll share a little bit of it with you later. The Spirit of God didn't tell me to today. He told me to talk to you about having enough oil. And so here in this story in Matthew 25, this parable that Jesus tells of the ten virgins, they all had enough oil. They were all virgins. They were all waiting on the bridegroom. So we're not talking about the world and Christians. We're talking about Christians here. But while they waited... Half of them, 50% of them, did not keep praying, did not stay well-oiled, did not... Hey, they all had a lamp. So this is not about having a light. This is about having enough oil to keep your light bright. 
Oh, 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 this is not about the light. This is about having enough oil to keep your light bright. You already have the light of God inside of you when you said yes to Jesus Christ. But do you have enough oil to keep your lamp lit and full flew open so that the oil is producing light inside of you? That's what the Holy Spirit wants me to talk to you about today. Five of them had enough flasks, in fact. They had extra flasks of oil. Five did not. And they, of course, wanted to borrow. Here we are, entitlement. Here's the first account of entitlement in the scripture. They said, let us have some of your oil. You mean the oil that I have because I kept praying and I kept staying in the Word and instead of vegging on Netflix or videos or reading romance novels, I was praying in the Holy Ghost and staying in the Word? That oil, that's what you want me to share with you? I don't think so because this oil is personal. I can't give you what I've attained by being in the presence of God. You can only get it now for free but you can only do it yourself. I can't give it to you. Just like the five could not give to the other. They said, no, now you have to go B-U-Y. Buy what was once freely given. And I'm telling you, that is a timeline situation. We are on it right now and the clock is ticking. We are getting to the point and you better believe it's coming and it's going to come upon us suddenly like the scripture talks about. When what was given freely by the Spirit of God will cost you. And it may be too late anyway. Because once they went and bought oil, now they have enough oil to keep their lamp lit, to keep their light bright. Now they have enough. But it was too late. The bridegroom came. The door was shut. And once that door is shut, it cannot be reopened. Jesus is the bridegroom in the story and I can just see how much he wants to open the door, but he is the door. And he could not open it because God the Father has set time in motion. And everything is for a season. And if you fool around and miss it, I said this many years ago. The Holy Spirit said to me at the turn of 2000, he said this to me. He said, there are those who are so used to walking in the blessing of my presence. They are so, they say, oh, I'll just catch it next time. Oh, I'm not going to go to that conference. I'll go next year. God said to me, many of those people won't see next year because they put off and, I'm trying to say this without sounding, I'm not condemning. I, I, I don't, I'm warning. Do not put off. Do not procrastinate in your spirit to do what God is telling you to do delayed obedience is disobedience to God. You cannot say, I'll do it when I get to it. I'll do it when I'm ready. Too late, the door is shut. You may have enough oil, but if the door is shut, what's the point of having a light? You need that door to stay open. Now with that thought in mind, 2 Kings chapter 4, I want to talk to you about this story of this amazing young woman. Um, <clears throat> Oh, thanks, uh, Debbie, for sending that link. I so appreciate it. Everyone, you are precious for staying in here with me. I had a lot more of you. I must have hurt somebody's feelings. I just had a big a bunch of you quit on me. So, uh, maybe you need to do me a favor right now for a moment. Hide the chat. Hit the thumbs up, will you? That helps the algorithm for YouTube. Second of all, I just put a title for this. I don't, I don't know what this title should be, but if you have a title... Put it in the comments and I'll go back later and look and see which uh, one I think most expresses uh, what this message is about. And maybe I'll use your title instead of the one that I just typed in really quickly. Second of all, while you're there and giving me a thumbs up, would you please hit the share button? And as you hit the share button, just copy and then go to your Facebook page, your uh, Instagram page, your uh, text people and, and paste the link so that they can join us right now, okay? Now let's get over into, thank you, Charlie, for still being here. Uh, I so appreciate it. Um, now, 2 Kings chapter four, the widow's oil. Let's keep talking about the oil and how do I keep my light bright 
in 2022. For how can a nation be filled with the light of God unless the light is coming forth from those of us who are still lit with the oil of the Spirit? Now, now one of the wives of a man of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha for help. Elisha is the prophet of the nation. Um, before him was Elijah. He was the prophet to the king and a prophet to the nation. Now, in this case, one of the wives of, of a man of the sons of the prophets. So her husband was a prophet and he's died. And so she goes to the lead prophet of the nation. And she goes to him for help, saying, your servant, so this prophet was working for Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant reverently feared the Lord. So they knew one another. This is a personal relationship here. But the cre creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves in payment for a loan. So here is what happens when you don't take care of your finances. If for some reason, something happens and you can't pay, then you trusted man's system instead of God's system. Owe no man anything but to love him. And then no matter what time you're in, then you can trust God that you will make it to the other side and he will be your gyra, your source, your supply. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have of value in the house? Now, I could stop here and I could preach all day long on that. She said, your maidservant has nothing of value. Hmm. He knew she had something of value. Now, you're not talking about a natural value here. She's asking, I mean, he's asking her what, in other words, get your mind off of the debt. Get your mind off what they're threatening. Get your mind off of what you're naturally looking at. Take your eyes off your circumstances. Take your eyes off your situation for a moment. What do you have of value in the house? She said, I do not have, your maidservant has nothing in the house except a small jar of olive oil. Now, if you look this up in the Strongs, you'll find that she's talking about a small jar of anointing oil that was her husband's. It was her prophet husband's anointing oil. It was not enough to pour out a bunch of jugs. This was a, but it was anointed. So you may say, I don't have a lot of oil, but honey, if that oil comes from the Holy Ghost and it's anointed, it's going to be enough. Having natural oil is worth flip. But having the anointing of God in your life will bring about a production of the light of God like you have never witnessed before. Then the prophet Elisha said to her, go, go. He said, get up, get moving. Don't sit here till you die. Go, borrow containers from all your neighbors, empty containers and not just a few. He wouldn't tell her how many to get, but he told her, Use your faith and get a bunch. Don't get just a few. Get a bunch of empty vessels. Then you shall go in and you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour out the oil, your little jar of anointing oil. You will pour out the oil you have into all these containers and you will set aside each one when it's full. Now, now, you, you got to know here, she had to start walking in the Spirit because in the natural, you're talking a little jar of oil and he's saying, fill each container and set them aside. Fill each container. With this, if she'd have thought in the natural, she her sons would have gone to the creditors and they'd have all died. But the truth is, she had to use her faith she listened to what the prophet said and she quickly obeyed. She sent her sons out and they borrowed not a few of empty containers. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They were bringing her the containers that they had gone and borrowed. She's come in and she shut the door. In other words, there's a timeline to obedience. They were bringing her the containers as she poured the oil. So she's pouring the oil, and they're bringing the containers. And she's like, another one, another one, bring me another one. 
bring me another one. And they're setting them aside. One probably bringing the empty one. The other one setting the full ones aside. When the containers were all full, she said to her son, bring me another container. And he said to her, there's not a one left. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and your, you and your sons can live on the rest. Now, here's what I want you to understand. That little bit of oil that was in her hand, she was willing to risk it all to obey God. Sometimes we eat our seed when God is telling us to do something with it, plant it, cause it to bring about harvest. He, she, she, this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible because this woman didn't even question Elisha. She didn't even question. She told her two sons, go get Get me some containers. And she went in and on all those empty containers and on her sons and her, she shut the door and she started pouring the oil. Now, here's what I want you to understand. If there had been more containers, that oil would still be flowing today. <laughs> here's what I want you to grasp here. When you walk in the Spirit of God and you obey Him, you can never run out of the anointing of God. You can never run out of enough oil to have your light bright at all times. It doesn't matter. Uh, Proverbs 15, 15, he who has a glad heart has a continual feast, continual feast, not just a feast, but an ongoing, never-ending, eternal, infinite line feast, regardless of your circumstances. In other words, you may have some circumstances, but your continual feast or your continual oil will keep pouring as long as you're pouring but the moment you stop pouring and you start holding on to it and you start having a pity party and a selfishness and you start looking at yourself instead of others your oil is going to dry up and you're going to feel burned out give up give out used i can't do it anymore lord everything is going against me <laughs> come on if you're having some resistance you're probably doing everything right it's time to start praying in the Holy Ghost more. Pray, warrior, pray. In your worst situation, pour the oil. Pray one for another. Pour the oil. Somebody tell you, la baseria yo, seria mo, seria mo, leo, seria mane, seio, ambase ne yo, se, le bona ne a sore amba, le tiebo sore ne. I hope right now, right where you are, that you're singing in the Holy Spirit, that you're praying in the Holy Spirit. Father, fill them with the Holy Spirit, fresh anointing, fresh fire of God. See, that's why we have to have all three levels of baptism. You not only need the oil of the Spirit of God, but you need that fresh fire, that flint, that fire to set your oil on fire so that your light is full. Baptize them in your fire, Lord, right now. That's also a chapter, the three levels of baptism and the power of it. Oh, I'm so excited about getting to pour this all into a book. I've been talking to so many of you about it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Anna Lewis has asked for prayer. Uh, I am COVID positive for the second time. The first time was in October, two weeks after getting my second vaccine shot. It's in my chest. I have lots of coughing and chest pressure. Praise God, no fever. I do uh, get out of breath when I walk around though. So I'm resting in bed. It's in my chest. Now, I just want to say what I know. The Spirit of God is moving right now, Anna, in the name of Jesus. But I, I want to remind you of a couple of things. First of all, taking over the counter antihistamine. Start it, right? It's not going to hurt you, so take it. Second of all, ask your doctor for one milligram nebulized budesonide and start doing it every four hours. It's in your chest. It's got to go. This is, it, it's, it's a, 
it's moved, okay? So, so once it hits your chest, you have to do these things. So uh, right now, get one milligram nebulized budesonide and start every four hours nebulizing it. Second of all, start taking antihistamine. So simple. Uh, there's big research out on it, and I'm not gonna, I don't have time to talk to you about it right now, but it's not gonna hurt you. So, uh, so go ahead and do that. Now, uh, in the name of Jesus, um, she said, I do get out of breath. So I'm uh, mostly bedridden. I'm praying for a rapid healing in Jesus' name. Um, thank God Dave is COVID negative, And both times I've had it, the Lord protected him from getting it. Glory to God. Um, I'm asking for prayer. I also have multiple masses on my ovaries. Doctors have done several tests, ultrasound, MRI. Uh, they don't believe it's cancer. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, they've recommended to get a hysterectomy, which is scheduled for February the 16th. In the name of Jesus, we speak to these masses in your ovaries for them to wither up and turn to nothing. Ashes in Jesus' name. Lord, hit them with the fire of the Holy Ghost and turn them to ashes right now in Jesus' name. Uh, <clears throat> Chandra is asking for prayer. Um, actually, she's asking about the book I have on uh, praying for your mate. And that's only a video on YouTube. You can watch that. Uh, I just recommend, depending on where your mate is, to take the 40-day prayer books. I'm using the uh, Speak the Word uh, Over Your Family for Healing right now, but I also have Speak the Word Over Your Family for uh, Finances and Speak the Word Over Your Family for Salvation. All you can pray for your mate, Overcoming Fear for 40 Days, wonderful books to pray for others. There's also the Obtaining Rest 40-day prayer journal to pray for others, and and um, and also um, uh, the peace book, 40-day prayer journal, all 40-day prayer journals, and you can order them on the website, which helps our ministry, SalemFamilyMinistries.org, and uh, I so appreciate you, uh, Chandra, for that, and I appreciate, she said, you heard, I heard about you when I was listening to Pastor Joel Osteen giving your testimony. Yes, uh, Pastor Joel is a long time and wonderful friend. So appreciate him sharing my story with all of his followers. And also, um, I'm asking all of you to pray with me right now for um, a friend, Jan Love, uh, first requested prayer for us when John was hospital hospitalized with COVID. This is Judy uh, talking. Please continue to pray for my husband, John, who is now in ICU and on a vent due to COVID and pneumonia in both lungs and the aftermath of that. Thank you for my heart and powerful teaching. I'm digging in and learning more and becoming better equipped with the necessary tools. Yes, I'm reminding you, Judy, go back and watch the videos from September and October and November. I was teaching on spiritual warfare and how to pray. And so if you haven't watched those, I'm asking you to go back and do that and re- um, that will be my next book that I'm going to get written, Pray Warrior Pray, but all the videos are there for you to watch and take notes. And I am reminding you, Judy, just as I said to Anna, ask your doctor, demand that the doctor give him one uh, milligram of nebulized budesonide every four hours and ask would they start immunohistamine and just see uh, what the differences would be. Uh, these are just natural, uh, simple, over-the-counter things. Uh, the budesonide is not. It's a uh, uh, from these, these are not my own ideas. I'm not giving you my thoughts. This is uh, Dr. Don Colbert and Dr. Richard Bartlett, and uh, both of them have uh, uh, been fighting COVID now all of this time, and that's their recommendation. Judy also asked for prayer for her nephew uh, Scotty, who is battling uh, ALS, and and I just wrote uh, day 28 when I was praying over um, this for Scotty Judy um, in the new Speak the Word for Healing book. Uh, Ma Matthew 8, 2 and 3 is day 28. I thank you, Lord, that you are willing to heal Scotty and to make him clean from all of this, all of this disease in, from ALS in Jesus' name. Scotty will diligently heed the voice of the Lord his God and will do what is right in his sight. Scotty will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. God will put none of the diseases on Scotty, which he allowed to be put on the Egyptians. For God is the Lord who heals Scotty. That's Exodus 15, verse 26. Thank you, Father, for your word and that you watch over your word to perform it. Uh, Sandra Pruitt, uh, one of my longtime partners, um, is asking for prayer for her and for her teacher friends. Um, they're all teachers, and they right now she said they all have covid and uh, she's asking for prayer for all of them. She's also still battling rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, she said, God 
has said, I will be healed for his glory. In Jesus' name, I agree with you, Sandra. Um, we're first going to pray, uh, Sandra, for your brother Stephen, for his salvation. Um, the Lord is Stephen's light and Stephen's salvation. Remember, we're speaking the word. God watches over his word to perform it. Whom shall Stephen fear or dread? The Lord is the refuge and stronghold of Stephen's life. Of whom shall Stephen be afraid? When the wicked, even Stephen's enemies and Stephen's foes, came upon Stephen to eat up Stephen's flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against Stephen, Stephen's heart shall not fear. Though war arise against Stephen, and this is warring right now I'm talking about for his soul. Uh, even then, in this, will Stephen be confident that the Lord is his light and his salvation in the name of Jesus. And for Sandra, for you and the other teachers, uh, but know that the Lord is set apart for himself and given the distinction to Sandra and her teacher friends who are godly. Thank you, Father Sandra, who is of loving kindness. The Lord listens and heeds when Sandra calls to him and heals her. If Sandra, who is called by my name, will humble herself, pray, seek, crave, and require of necessity my face, and turn from all wicked ways, I know you have, Sandra, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive her sin and heal her land. In the name of Jesus, your land represents uh, here who you are, your family, your heritage, and even your job position. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord, for Sandra, and I thank you that you bless her bread and her water, and you take sickness from the midst of her. Lori is asking uh, for prayer, um, day 37. Um, I go through this book and ask the Lord to show me what um, days he wants me to pray. This is the bottom half, First John 3. Lori, I'm praying for you, verses 21 and 22. Beloved, if Lori's heart does not condemn her, Lori has confidence toward God, and whatever Lori asks, she receives from Christ because Lori keeps his commandments and does those things that are pleasing in his sight in the name of Jesus. Also, uh, Sonia is asking for complete healing from pain in her stomach and her hormones to be balanced and for Jim, her husband, um, to also have balanced hormones and to find a good job. Salvation for all my children. Um, the scripture that the Lord gave me for you is 1 John 5. Now this is the confidence that Sonia has in Christ, that if Sonia asks anything according to God's will, he hears her. And if Sonia knows that God hears her, whatever Sonia asks, Sonia knows that she has the petitions that she has asked of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we agree with you for your children's salvation, for you and your husband's hormones to be balanced in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, I've already asked you to pray for Danny and for all those who have lost uh, loved ones this week who have stepped over into eternity. Uh, I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, I want to especially pray for Josh Christmas. Uh, my friends, Ken and Candy Christmas son, Josh, a few nights ago uh, was admitted to the hospital with a brain bleed and they asked for prayer and they are both massive prayer warriors that they've been praying for Harry and standing with me and I want to pray and stand with them for Josh to be completely healed and for this brain to stop bleeding and for all the blood to dissipate and for his brain to function normally in the name of Jesus. I'm also uh, asking you to continue to pray for my precious friend Joni Lamb. Uh, Marcus went home to be with Jesus on November the 30th, and I'm asking you to continue to pray for her and all the children and the grandchildren in the name of Jesus. I have so many uh, pastor friends who have uh, been fighting COVID, and uh, many have given me a good report that they are over it. Others are still coming through it. Um, just so many uh, friends, Pastor Bobby and Pastor Rocky and, pa Rocky and Pastor Laura and Pastor Hobby and Pastor Jamie and Kurt and uh, Lenny and uh, her husband, Sunil, they're in uh, Morganton, North Carolina with, with Pastor Benji and Pastor Rocky. He uh, was in ICU, but um, he's doing so well. She uh, just begged the doctors and they did the right thing. They gave him the budesonide and other things and they've moved him back to a private room. He was at 55 liters of oxygen on high flow. Uh, but as of last um, Friday night, he was 55 liters of oxygen, and Saturday morning, he was at 8 liters 
I'm telling you, God is on the move and he has an answer. He has an answer in the name of Jesus. Um, now, the Lord gave me 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Um, we are united and joined it to the Lord. We are one spirit with him. And the Lord said to me, you want to talk about life support? That is it. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 17. We are united and joined to the Lord. We are one spirit with him. That means when we fully yield our spirit to the Holy Spirit, we are one spirit with him. That's life support. That's life, 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 and life more abundantly. I'm also holding in my hand as, as I'm speaking these prayers um, over Fred Garcia, one of our precious longtime partners, he and Lila, uh, Fred from Mount Hope Church, uh, the great Mount Hope Church in Lansing, Michigan, and we speak life, no cancer. These tumors cannot be in your body. They've got to go in Jesus' name. No, not one tiny cancer cell can stay, Fred, in your body. It's got to go in Jesus' name. We take authority over it. We command cancer cells to leave your body in the name of Jesus. Rachel is asking for prayer for her brother-in-law, Richard, who's fighting COVID at home. But he was, but he uh, went to the hospital. This was on January the 12th for healing, for wisdom, uh, for the doctors. He will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in his life. I agree with you, Rachel. And also 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6, the Spirit gives life. Uh, Richard, uh, we pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will live and not die. We say the name of Jesus because the name destroys chaos. It destroys COVID. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Um, Lydia is asking for prayer for uh, Keith and Dina's complete healing, diagnosed with COVID. Uh, Kateb, you will bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. Kateb, you will bow your knee. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord over COVID. Jesus Christ is Lord over over COVID, in the name of Jesus, you demon, you bow your knee right now worldwide to the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus that destroys chaos, that destroys COVID, that destroys the destroyer in the name of Jesus. Uh, Jen is asking for prayer for Scotty. Uh, he's in St. Francis Hospital in Tulsa, critical uh, condition with covid uh, it's the grandson of Reverend uh, Bill Saunders. Um, the Lord gave me page uh, day 32 to pray. Um, let me find day 32 here because um, when he gives me a specific one, I want to make sure I pray what he told me. Mark 11, 22 through 24. Father, I thank you that we all have faith in God for Scotty. For assuredly, I say to Scotty, whoever says, to this mountain, we name this mountain of COVID nationwide, worldwide, Australia-wide, in Jesus' name, be removed and be cast into the sea. Why do we throw them into the sea? Because demons can't swim in Jesus' name. And we do not doubt in our hearts, but we believe that these things, Father, I am asking you to turn the tide of every variant of COVID, and I'm asking you to do it worldwide right now. Now, stop the surge of COVID with a Holy Ghost surge of your spirit, Father. In the name of Jesus, push Kateb out into the sea from every nation, into the sea, into the ocean, and drown this demon in Jesus' name. Be removed and cast into the sea. We do not doubt in our hearts, but we believe that the things that we say will come to pass and come to pass quickly. We will have whatever we say concerning healing for Scotty and others with COVID. Therefore, I say to Scotty, whatever things we ask when we pray, we believe that we receive them and we will have them concerning Scotty's healing in the name of Jesus. No longer critical, but going home healed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Kaylee is asking uh, for prayer uh, for her, uh, for Shelly Mandery, another Mount Hoper regarding her husband, Rich. 
uh, he took a sharp turn tonight and they uh, hit him. We say no to death in Jesus' name. Um, day 33, the Lord said um, to pray this. So John 9 and John 10, we're going to pray over um, Mallory's husband, Rich. We are worshipers of God, John 9, verse 31. And we do God's will and God hears us concerning our requests for Rich's healing. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Kateb, you are a destroyer, but the word of God destroys you. Jesus has come that rich may have life and that rich may have it more abundantly. Therefore, we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus that rich has life and that he has it more abundantly in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. We've already prayed for Sandra and the teachers in Jesus' name. And I also thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Uh, day 40, I'm, I'm turning there, Lord. Day 40, I've got, I got this in my spirit the other day uh, when I was praying for you all during the week. And the Lord put it strong in my spirit, so I'm going to talk to you about it as I pray. Isaiah 54, 17. But no weapon. Oh, there it is right there. Look for scriptures that give you power legally in the court of heaven. Isaiah 54, 17 says no weapon. COVID is a biological weapon cooked up in a lab. It's a weapon. And God says right here in Isaiah 54, no weapon, whether demon-made, devil-made, or man-made, no weapon that is formed against us, against you, against Sandra, against Scotty. Put in the comments the names right now. We're praying for COVID right now. For anybody that has been diagnosed with COVID, for Rich, uh, for Bethany, for Darren, uh, I'm calling forth right now in the name of Jesus, um, no weapon. We have, we have legal precedent in the court of heaven. No weapon that is formed against the human race shall prosper. And every tongue, no biological weapon, no COVID-19 weapon that is formed against the human race shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment, we shall show that they are in the wrong. We must fight this fight, y'all. We cannot lay down. This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage of us. This is our heritage to triumph, to say that no weapon, no biological weapon, no COVID weapon will be will prosper that has been formed against us. We say we are the servants of the Lord, those in whom the ideal servant, Jesus, of the Lord is reproduced. This is the righteousness or the vindication which we obtain from God. This is that which I impart to you, says the Spirit of the Lord, as our justification and our vindication. I've been asking the Lord to vindicate the human race from this attack and to do what he has to do to remove those who are not repentant in the name of Jesus. Sonia is asking for prayer, complete healing. We continue to pray for her in her stomach area. And Lisa... Uh, John 6, 63, uh, it is the spirit that gives life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving life to Bill. Uh, Lisa Beck, you are loved, and you are continuing to pray for Bill. I ask you, Lord, that you move on uh, some of the family or Bill's heart to reach out to Lisa so she has an answer to what she is going through in the name of Jesus. Rhonda is asking for prayer for uh, against COVID. Um, she's from Maumel, Arkansas. I know right where that is. Uh, she's 56 years old and her two sons, Caleb, they've all tested positive for coronavirus. And also uh, her sp spouse passed away in 2017 from cancer. And so, uh, Father, I thank you that you will be a father to the fatherless and a husband to the widow. I thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, move right into her home right now and touch her and heal her. No weapon 
formed against you, Rhonda. No weapon formed against Caleb or Carson Hudson in the name of Jesus. No biological weapon. Oh, I'm on to something right now, y'all. I'm on to something. Come on, list the names of every person you want me to pray for. In the name of Jesus, we come against no weapon can be formed against you. No weapon, no COVID weapon can be formed against us. It won't prosper. That word prosper in the Hebrew means breakthrough to success. So no COVID biological weapon can break through to success against you in the name of Jesus. We prophesy it. We say it. We demand it. We declare it. We decree it in Jesus' mighty name. Now, uh, Savannah is asking for prayer. Uh, she is... Um, she, her prayer request is to be able to overcome depression. This is our precious little Savannah Anderson. And clouded thoughts and feelings that God will provide the faith to overcome faith in him. That he will work through therapy to bring clarity. That he is for me and not against me. And there is help. Uh, there is help. Uh, there is and there uh, to help me through the fight of uncertainty. Isaiah 60 verse 1 came to me when I was praying for you, uh, Savannah. Arise from the depression and the oppression, oppression in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. See, the this season right now, this season of the light of God is sent on the earth and it's the direct opposite of depression and oppression. One of the side effects of COVID is depression, PTSD, anxiety, all coded in the biological weapon. But God says the glory, the light of God is the antidote. Woo! It's the antidote for COVID. No depression can stand in the light of God. Father, I thank you that the light of God is so bright inside of Savannah, that the Holy Ghost is so bright inside of Savannah that it dispels every speck of darkness out of her life. Depression, bow your knee. Oppression, bow your knee. In the name of Jesus, for your light, Savannah, has come. Your light, Savannah, has come. Savannah, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's pray you one for another that we may be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I come against every person who's dealing with depression and oppression and, and the side effects, the tormenting side effects of COVID in the name of Jesus. I command I command the darkness to flee from you in Jesus' mighty name. I so appreciate you all. I love you with my whole heart. I'm asking you to hide the chat, uh, the, the uh, live chat for a moment. Hit thumbs up. Only four of you have done that. Please do that for me. Hit the share button. Copy the link and go over to your other social media platforms and paste it, and then others can watch us. So did you give me what you think that message title should be? I would love to know what you think. I would love to know what you hear. Do me a huge favor and please order something this week or become a partner with our ministry or a one-time gift. If these messages are helping you, if these prayers are helping you, and uh, you're being blessed. If I am pouring into your life, please consider being a partner with our ministry. I so appreciate you. I pray that the peace of God surrounds you at all times, that the joy of the Lord is your strength. I pray that the love of God so covers you and brings you into the place of the peace that you understand who loves you more than anything, and that is the love of God. He loves you. He adores you. Please keep praying for me. I am being healed even as I'm sharing the word of God. I am being healed in Jesus' name and I am able to raise my arms this far. Glory to God. Uh, that little tumble, I uh, jammed my arms really hard on the concrete and uh, it, it stove up all up in this area. In the name of Jesus, God is healing me and restoring me in Jesus' name. You should try to wash fix and straighten your hair and curl your hair when you can't lift your arms. So if you don't like my hair today, that's why. <laughs> God is good all the time and his love and his mercy endure forever. Uh, may his face shine upon you. May he give you peace in the name of Jesus. You are so loved and so appreciated.